verify? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Okay. Can I, can I start, sir? Yes. Perfect. So, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Roy Moria. I'm uh, the CEO and founder of Social Kit. Uh, Social Kit is a uh, boutique iOS app studio that specializes in uh, video and photo processing apps. And today I'm going to speak about the journey I've done myself from a small app uh, indie developer to a successful business. So, let's get started. You can just share my screen. Okay, just just to verify, everybody can see uh, the screen. Search, can you confirm? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, let's get started. <laughs> and you just launch your app. What are the next steps you should take? So I have some good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is that your app is finally in the App Store, and uh, so congratulations. <laughs> the bad news is that uh, in order to make income and profit out of it, which is eventually what you want to do, uh, you have to uh, uh, shine among other apps. And today the, uh, at the store, the competition is huge. So what things can we do to actually improve our chances? Uh, in social kit, uh, we basically uh, using analytics as the main tool to focus on growth. We use analytics in two main funnels. The first funnel is business funnel. The second one is app usage. The beautiful thing is that when you actually do, uh, doing those two correctly, uh, creating a healthy analytics for business model and app usage, eventually they feed each other. So this is like the, the, the magic triangle that we use in, in the app and I'm, I'm in, in our apps. And I'm going to dive, uh, dive a bit deeper on each one of them. So let's start with app usage. Uh, improve usability, fix crashes, and optimize performance. Why is so important as the first thing you do when you launch the app is to fix the crashes and optimize performance? So usually you know it when you develop apps to work on a very small or lean uh, in app, app development uh, environment. And you can easily miss uh, edge cases because in real world scenarios, you have many devices, newer, older, and many app states and uh, device states that, that could encounter. Uh, so what we do is once we launch the app, uh, when we try the best to fix everything we can, we use uh, uh, tools to uh, track those crashes. Two tools that we, I can recommend. The first tool is Xcode. Actually, Xcode has a, a, a built-in support for crashes. It's pretty, sh it's pretty shallow crashes, but it still gives you some indication about uh, um, drastic things that could happen in the app. And the second thing that's what I recommend more, more is a, a, a crash limit by Firefox, which is a free tool that we use that actually gives you much deeper understanding of what's going on and what's crashes with much deeper crash logs. And the second thing that you, you can do is the optimize performance. So nowadays, uh, our mobile devices is like a small computer on, on your pocket. And, and there is some every operation that, that you can run that you, that you, we can run today. For example, machine learning based uh, operations or argument and reality based operations. And again, when you test those uh, on a small environment, you can, uh, you can think that it works fast on, on, on the, the tests you've made. But actually, on some other, or other devices, those operations can be very slow. So, what we do, we actually log the duration of those operations. And if it's possible, even log the chunk of this algorithm operation. And after a week or two that the app is live and it's been exposed to much, much more people, users, you can um, see uh, visually where it's slower and, or what part is slower and can optimize those. Eventually, all of those leads to minimize churn. Churn is basically the drop off from the app. So, basically, how many people are leaving or deleting the app? And what we want to do in the end is to decrease as much as we can. So we want no crashes and hopefully the best performance possible. If you have a better, better app, um, uh, happier users, and eventually minimize churn. And learn behavior, and uh, load key event and understand your usability. So a common mistake I've seen many developers doing from, from this perspective, that they're actually logging much more events than they, than they need. This leads to an issue where actually instead of creating insight from your data, you are drawing in too much information. 
And this leads, this leads you to uh, actually get confused a bit about what you want to check or what you want to understand. And, and those, again, both leads to you to focus on the right stuff. So if you will focus on the right events, you can track and you, you, you can basically attack specific events in the app and improve the overall experience. The third thing is ask for feedback. And don't be shy to ask for, 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 for uh, uh, reviews or feedback from the users. At the end, the most useful feedback is from the actual audience of your applications. And if you basically ask, uh, have users, you can easily understand if a user is an heavy user by seeing the amount of retention he has or the amount of key action he does in the app. You can ask the people from them, is there a high chance they will be willing to do it as they are an ordinary uh, user at this point. And this was well leading for a better access experience and for you to actually update your app according to the user needs. Eventually, all those are connecting to the most important factor, which is improved app store performance. All these three points I just spoke about are very nice to have, but you have to understand why it's so important. So as you know, Apple is a very user-friendly platform, and they push apps that actually doing good with the users. So all these key factors actually resemble not only in the, in, in the individual experience of the user, it's also in the app store ranks, it's affects you. So if you have a better app, you have better retention, you have better retention, more people will purchase, and Apple know how to track those events, and they can and improve your, uh, your ranks, and basically put your app above the others because it's better. Now I'm uh, proud to call Elon, which is an iOS engineer at Social. It is going to explain and uh, show, basically show us a case study of uh, something that happened in, 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 in the Hello everyone, my name is Ayla. I'm uh, very happy to be here. Um, I'm an Ash engineer here um, in the uh, in social kit and very happy to present um, a case study about um, Repatch, um, which is an app we've uh, been working with. Um, by the way, can you see uh, my screen? And someone can see my screen. Yes, I think they can. Did you give us a share? Ah. One second. Seven. Yeah. I will get share. Sorry. One moment. Did you give us a share? Okay. Now we got it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sorry for a little um, different issue. Yeah. Um, so we're here to talk about uh, Move Object, which is an app we released about three months ago, um, and it. I'm here to talk about how we can use um, analytics and actually measurement data from the app to understand user usability uh, in the real world. Um, so, a bit of a, about um, remove object. Basically, we let users um, select an object they want to remove from the photo, and we remove the photo for them using machine learning and AI algorithms. So, um, remove object. So, when we design um, uh, as developers, when we design it, we have very um, clear intuitions of what users should do and what they want to achieve. So, when we design the app, we design this little um, toolbar that lets user make, users make selection. So, we have four options here by default. Um, we have a brush, which we can draw with our finger over the image to remove parts. Um, we can have the lasso, uh, that we can maybe make a selection around an image. We have a spot where we, if we want to, users to Erase you know, people's pimples from your face, etc. And we also have an eraser tool to erase the current selection if we have it. For example, if I have here the selection of the person, I can erase uh, uh, the selection. So, um, as, as I said, we have clear intuitions of what um, should work, and we said, you know, it's going to be nice to have all of these tools to let users have more freedom to make what they But um, we started logging, we lost the app, and we started logging events and logging type events um, in order to see what users use the most. And we quickly seen that we have a problem. And some of you may already be able to tell it, but the problem is the eraser tool. So, why is this such a problem? You know, the app is called remove objects, and when users enter the app, the immediate uh, thing they want to opt into is remove an object. And the eraser tool is the only tool that actually has a simple 
and a name that relates to a moving object, you know, um, as, as differentiation from the brush or lasso, which is stuff users may not really understand. So we made a lot of thinking and we really tried to um, figure out how, why this happens and how to cope with that. And we really made a thinking process of what our target audience is. So you know, if we were to aim for a target audience that is more professional, we may really um, be able to want to have tools like Brush, Lasso, Spot, and other things. But since our target audience um, from, the, from the beginning was the, you know, the more casual, everyday user, um, we really wanted to simplify things down, and this is what we did in, in the next version. Um, so this is the new version of our toolbar. So we just, as you can see, we simplified to just two single um, tools, select and deselect, which really eliminated and eliminates a lot of confusion, um, and just one button uh, next to that. And so this is a prime example of how you know we as a developer we can think we're the greatest at uh, you know, predicting, but we can eventually never really know what this is going, gonna, going to do. So fortunately for us, this, is, this has resulted in a decreased, decreased bounce rate of um, around 82%, which is amazing. By the way, if you don't know what bounce rate is, it's basically the uh, rate where people enter the app and just exit it right away because they don't understand um, how to work with it. So this is, um, I think, a very good example of how we can track events and uh, we can log events to understand really how users behave and how to improve on that. Um, thank you very much. That's uh, my part here. I'm happy to call my free. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Ellen, so much for the great explanation of the case study. Let's continue. Uh, as you remember from the uh, second slide, uh, analytics can be used uh, for app usage and for business. Now, this part, I think, is even less known to developers. It's much, much under the rocks, as they say. So I will try to explain what tools, what, what things you can do with analytics and eventually to, break, to make more money and, and regarding the business model. So the first, the first thing is to understand revenue metrics. And it's a, it can focus on conversion rate and return rate. So those two are very known uh, phrases, uh, I would say in the business model ecosystem. And, and, and we can, I, I will try to explain specifically what it means in business model and overall. So conversion rate can be in context of many things. But usually when you speak about B2C economy, it's mainly for uh, how many people I, I converted from a free users to paying users. So an easy example, if for example from the store, 1,000 people download my app and 100 people purchase, I would say that I have 10% conversion rate. And churn rate is in the other end, is how many people canceling my subscription in a way. So let's assume I have 100 people that already subscribe, and then one, let's assume that I have monthly subscription, and one month after, they cancel the subscription, like 10, 10 of them cancel the subscription. Meaning that I have 10% churn rate. So I do ideally what we want, and this is the mindset you have that should guide you. We want to have 100% conversion rate and 0% churn rate. This is basically, this is like ideally it doesn't really be happening, but this is like the, the, the end of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, you are in layout. And important things that you need to pay attention to is CTA, drop off, visual design. Now, visual design is not, it's not connecting directly to analytics, but it's a nice bonus to understand that eventually things that doesn't appeal to the user visually will behave bad in terms of CTA and wrap of and everything. So the fundamental is that you should look good and feel good. Two key factors to maintain, to, to try, is CTA and wrap off. CTA is call to action. It's usually connected to the button, to the main button in, in your payroll screens. And, and you want to track those. So basically, how many people actually purchasing them pay and eventually cancels? If you see high rate of people actually purchasing, and of uh, and pressing on, on the CTA but doesn't that doesn't purchase, you can understand about maybe something is broken, maybe something is wrong like with, with, with the SDK, or maybe something with the app flow itself is broken. Second thing is drop off. So before this, when you actually present the screen, maybe you trigger it in, in, in a certain in a certain time in the app, and you see that many people see the screen, so they did they, they invest the time to actually create something and see the subscription. 
but eventually they like just just closing the screen. So why? Maybe I'm presenting in the wrong time, uh, etc. Which leads me exactly to the third bullet, which is when to trigger. Two things you need to pay attention. So pick the right time. You have to pick the time where the user is the most invest invested. So two good practice I like to, to say to, to, to like in the app. The first thing is doing onboarding. Even Apple itself recommends to do onboarding, and which you see you are showing some three, four slides of what the app can do. In the end, you can uh, ask the user to, to subscribe. And the second thing is if it's not in the onboarding, then pick the right time when uh, it's actually invested in, in, in the funnel itself. So let's assume that it closed onboarding, and so in this time it didn't purchase. You don't show him again like the subscription right away. They wait to do some kind of funnel. So let's assume like in retouch, as Aaron said, we we'll basically show the subscription again only after it's done the, the main action, is removing an object. So let's assume that we limit this option. After three, four times, we'll show it again. And don't disturb the app flow. So don't uh, uh, pop up like the paywall in, in, in the middle of, it, of, of, uh, of a user doing something specific. Always make sure that it makes sense, because if it doesn't make sense to you, it will not make sense to the user. Let's go to the second, to the third, and to the fourth test slide. A-B test is the key. And this is the main tool that we use in social did in the last two years to improve everything, from component to a revenue, everything you can think about. And uh, we can tell, I can tell personally that in social kit we drastically increase the revenue only by doing A-B tests. So I'm speaking about pure A-B testing without changing almost anything besides the paywalls or certain things in the app. And this is amazing because the beautiful thing about A-B tests is um, if you have two options, one of them has to win. Like this just mathematically, yeah, that, that's the way it works. And what should I A-B test? So there is many things you should A-B test. And again, it's, it's getting us to the same point where focus is the key. You have to focus on what you want to test. You can't test everything. You have to be very specific in what you do. So in social kit, we are focusing on three things that we, that we are testing. Yeah, it's paywalls, features, and, and apps for pages. And we're going to go uh, dive deep on each one of those. It starts with paywalls. So this is by far my most recommended A-B test that you should do. And as you can see, this uh, stupid simple uh, uh, check we've, we've made, we have two paywalls almost identical in a way. So the, the only parameter we isolated visually is the CTA color, as you can see, like the weekly and monthly, and the product itself. So the beautiful thing about this is that if you actually use this in a real world scenario, one of them would win. And what, let's say that the second one win, like the one with the monthly, then you can do an, a follow-up A-B test where you actually change the product itself. So you know that this UI works for you. Then you try another set of tests where you put one month, $1 for a month, $2 for a month, free trial, yearly, etc. So don't be shy trying out as many screens as you can. In social kit, you try around 40 screens per up. It's crazy. And every metrics in the screen, if you use tools like Revenue Cat and Adapti, could be tracked. So you can see how many people cancel the subscription from the origin from the screen, how many people purchase, what is the conversion rate, what is the lifetime value, uh, what is the amount of free funds, and you can make a calculated decision about the right pay. This is literally equals more money if you do this work. The second thing is usability. Usability is exactly what Elon spoke about. And the beautiful thing when you think about usability is that if we actually didn't rely on our intuition, as Elon said, and we, from the beginning would think a bit more out of the box and think about, well, maybe it's not the clear, the clear, the, the clear way for the user, we would just do it as an A-B test from the beginning. And we would obviously see that the left one wins, as, as we saw in an Elon example. This could be for components, for UI, and for features, everything you can think about that can be isolated. Remember, it's not an A-B test if the parameters are not isolated correctly. The third thing is absolute page from the iOS developers in the crowd. This is one of the most significant uh, yeah, that, that, we, that we have in, in the app store for a few years now. It's been in the Play Store for a long time now, which is called, I think, experiments, if I, I, I recall correctly. And Apple in iOS 15 introduced 
and building a support for A-B test on the App Store, App Store page level. It comes in a different ways, but while we focus on the simplified uh, explanation of it, basically it lets you change promotional text, um, app icon, and screenshots, and it gives you all the metrics you want from the analytics to understand what's, what works better in an A-B test, an A-B test structure, and in social, it is the map that relies on organic traffic. This is a bless because now we have a, 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 we can try different icons, different screenshots, and not be. And previously, you had to do it with external tools, or you had to actually do an app update and and compare it manually to what you had before. This was just a big mess. So this is I would I, I would urge everybody to pay attention to this. It's a very very important thing to to, to utilize better in the future. And uh, if I can uh, have a closing statement uh, um, for you for you guys at the audience, is I switch to a business plans. All the tools we ju I just spoke about are practical tools that lets you uh, grow. But in the end, the change starts from you. So if uh, you are a lone wolf, as I was for a few year, uh, good years, and I did everything myself, and the design myself, and the UX myself, and the apps for myself, first of all, it's very hard. And the result is, is, is far less good than changing the mindset and think on yourself as a business. And if you know, if I know that I'm not the best at UI, I would actually pay $500 to somebody to help me do, with the UI. Or if I know that my app store is not, I don't have the best skill, I will uh, use somebody to help me with the ASO. So don't, don't be afraid to use other people to, to, to work on your idea. Don't be afraid to, to, to um, 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 use uh, tools uh, or uh, devices from people and kind of business. It's, it's a very slow journey that if I knew back then, if someone took me back then and tell me, hey Roy, like exactly this sentence, stop doing everything on yourself and, and change your mindset to be much more wide and not lean as, as, as it was now, as it was and now is much more uh, um, broad, it will be an amazing thing. So this is my small tip for you. And thank you for listening to, to us. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I will be happy to reply. questions and I will take advantage and ask uh, the very first question myself. Uh, so my question is uh, about um, those dreamers since we are a mobile development company um, we usually interact with people who have uh, great ideas like so many ideas and uh, things they want to implement in the very first version of the app so that we build their apps for months like six nine months it is uh, no surprise for us to uh, work on the very first uh, version of the app. And um, uh, of course, uh, this client uh, should invest uh, quite a lot of money into this kind of uh, version. Um, since you are the iOS developer and you know all these tools about A-B testing and such, you definitely uh, use the advantage of all these tools and get the results you were speaking about in your speech. So I was just thinking if you could give me a hint, like um, how could I um, diverse the mindset of our clients from dreamers to a business model? Um, that would be really helpful. Just maybe a few words or some questions, like just put you yourself in my shoes and like what would you say to a client if you were me? Thank you. So this is actually a great question. And, and the most important thing about it is to understand uh, what is balance. So basically, of course, you can work months and months and months and to try to uh, you know do everything correct for the first time. But in reality, if I were in your shoes, I would tell my client that the best strategy is to actually fail fast. And instead of trying to do it correctly for the first time, fail fast. If you have, for example, and, and, and an idea for a, a upload that you think it works, 
it's better to go up, to go with something like a, a POC, tell them it's much more beneficial. Also from Mars perspective, tell them it's, it will be better to launch three months before with with the idea of the app we have now, instead of, instead of trying to perfect it on the first time, because it will never be perfect for the first time. So it's better to launch with what you have, with the best knowledge you have, obviously, but it, the, the, the data you get once you launch the app is much more valuable than what you can assume before. So this is, I will just repeat this one, I told them we will understand much better what's wrong with the app flow or with the component, with, with everything, once we launch, instead of work for five, six more months, just because we think it's right. Because the, the only way, and I, I've been told this many times before until I actually started to say it myself, the best way to understand something is when you have analytics behind you, when you know if it's working or not. Intuition is nice to have, but it's not, the, usually it, you could be wrong, and the only way to know it is to launch first, and then there's no other way to see it, vice versa. So I, I, I hope that it will help you search. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, anybody else who wants uh, to ask a question? Who's the party? Yeah. What is the party? Yeah, so actually, um, for general, general A-B tests, like you know, testing features, uh, testing um, usability within the app, you can actually use Firebase Remote Config. Firebase um, provides a lot of interesting products, and Firebase originally launched the beta of the uh, Remote Config A-B test configuration to reconfigure uh, what parameters you want to, to measure. You know, if you also have Google Analytics uh, implemented, you can really test out against specific uh, parameters, specific uh, analytics features, um, and Firebase really gives you a uh, sort of a graph of what works better. And that is the best way of, um, in my opinion, or the, it's also free to measure uh, usability and uh, features. Um, and for measuring uh, revenue and measuring, you know, churn rates and everything we spoke about, uh, we, we specifically use um, Adaptive, which is a tool um, that we're really a design partner with. And they let us actually make A-B tests on products themselves, on products like maybe if it's an introductory offer, like a free trial, like um, you know, a discount, um, or you know, an annual subscription, monthly, weekly, and we can really see results based on um, what works better uh, in that. So for features, I uh, use Firebase from a function, that's what we use, and for revenue, uh, we use a tool called Adaptive, you can uh, look them up. But once 
you understand. So that's usually the use case of, of, of a developer uh, is that it develops something, right? Uh, adding some you know, purchases, everyone else always his own application in the store. And one of them starts to make small money. And then it starts, your mindset starts to say, well, if this makes more money, you start thinking about maybe should I focus only on this, right? Maybe it's worth me uh, living with the job I have currently, etc., and, and focus on this. And, and here, what's happening is that usually you will do the switch in, in life itself, like in reality, but your mindset is still very lean. And the issue is that this lowers your chance to succeed. That, that, that's the problem. That's why you should do it. That's why you should always think about from, from a business perspective. Because if you really want to make an app development your main source of income and, and, and you want this to be a, what's your main business, you have to understand that it's a business and you can't do everything on your own. And if you would, you would try to do it, and I did it for like five years only on myself, the second I, I let go for a second and gave somebody else to help me, I, everything went up, like the numbers, the revenue, and, and it's, it's such a good decision to do only when you think it's going to be your main source of income. So when you, when you go all in. So in this case, I would do it. And that's that, that, that why I would do it. At least for me. Yeah.